Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. This week, we're on my channel. I'm joined here with my lovely friend, Catherine. How are you today? I'm really good. I've just got back from an exercise class, and oh, I love it. I mean, I don't love it at the time, but I so love it afterwards. Yeah, I'm feeling great. I've been, t I told you before we started filming at night, I've been watching and you guys, if you follow me on Instagram, you follow my reels, you probably see them all because I just lay in bed getting so emotional. I've been watching uh, videos of people all over the world when they finish the London Marathon or the New York Marathon, where they film people like crossing the finish line. And it is true. I posted one on my, you know, with exercise, you know, you're, you hate it when you're in it, but when you're done, you feel so good. And you just see, you know, if you want to see the best of humanity, go watch a road race because at the end of that finish line at that marathon, nobody cares what political party you're associated with. Nobody cares what gender you are. Nobody cares what your race is. Everybody is literally cheering each other on and hugging each other. And there was one clip I shared where towards the end, I think it was the New York marathon or the Boston marathon, an old man like stumbled. He was like, like just a few yards away and this pack of runners came and picked him up put his arm and they ran with him to get him over that that finish line and just seeing people wipe tears away from actually accomplish like you just ran 26.2 miles like what a feeling that is and so that's what's great about exercise it's another not only does it bring up your shadow side but there's that other side to it too where you get to prove yourself wrong you get to prove oh, completely wrong. and you know we're in a state now where most people never put themselves under voluntary pressure which is why when they're put under external pressure all hell get breaks loose and we're going to be talking about this today and again when we're talking about this you know we're going through this the same as everyone else is but no one else can do the work for you you know you have to make that stage where you get to the stage where you're putting the short-term benefit aside for the long-term gain you know what type of person do you want to be what type of person do you want to become because it's absolutely ludicrous to sit there and say we want the world a different way if we're not prepared to put the work in ourselves it just doesn't happen like that yeah and i love that i love that it, putting yourself because i talk about that in my yoga classes a lot in in the corrupted world of yoga you hear teachers say get comfortable but yoga is not about being comfortable yoga is actually about getting yourself in a controlled environment where you're uncomfortable that mm. i love that that voluntary pressure so that you can observe yourself and get to know yourself in a, in a different way your mind's negotiating with you so that you're right when things happen in your life that's involuntary pressure you're able to like go through it with a little bit more integrity and you're a little bit more within your own self resting within your own self self certain not certainty but self awareness and, and, and autonomy and that's why because last time we did this Catherine like when we did last week's coffee chat on your channel I thought it was going to be a really fun chat looking mm. at you know a different perspective of the Cassiopeians not once did we say this is correct information it was just oh. speculating about another theory for us and for me the biggest thing about that was like it reminded me whether this this the Cassiopeians are correct or not it reminded me that the royal family is not at the top of the pyramid and that's another yeah. reality check for me and we got some good comments but we had some really really nasty like to the point where you know we're used to getting trolls but i had to make a video myself the next day because i was so horrified and disturbed by some of the behavior um just because simply because we were presenting another opinion didn't say it was our opinions we were just speculating and i and i wanted to kind of ask you today what what we've learned in this week's time because i tell you Catherine, like i thought in my mind that the point of being awake of being a seeker of the truth was being open-minded and being able to look at a lot of different perspectives without making a judgment just to take in the information and to settle into the information and just entertain ideas without accepting them like aristotle says mm -hmm. i realized that um literally the truth or community not everybody obviously there were a lot of people that weren't but for us a, a select few in the truth or community the vitriol and the violence that's lashed out if you just suggest there might be a different perspective and that terrified me because that is not that is not being awake oh i it's 
honestly, I sat back and I looked at it and it was nothing more than I expected, which is a sad reality in terms of the state of affairs when we're at. Because the thing is, there's such a thing as keypad warriors. And I knew, I personally know some of the people that made the worst comments or the most judgmental comments. And the irony of it all is that people cannot see that when they lash out like that, the real one who's got an issue is not me who's presenting something and not even, you know, we could not, I've lost count of how many times we said in that video, when we were talking about the horses injured, I very clearly said, I don't know whether it's real or not, but I do know that I saw them. You know, I work professionally. I've had horses since I was 14 years old. I work professionally with horses day in, day out. You cannot make a horse lame like they did without physically injuring it. So whether it was set off, I am interviewing, I'll say his name quickly, Ollie Damagard in a week or so's time, who's the expert on false evidence. I've spoken about him loads of times on my channel. You've heard me mention him a lot. And the whole point is, is that a flag does not mean that real people or real animals are not injured. Absolutely. That's not what it means at all. What a false flag means is it means that the perpetrators are not who you think they are okay 100 percent. and i didn't i i i always assumed everybody knew, knew that oh sorry that's my computer that everybody knew that but i guess what you're saying is he's presenting this and i guess we see that people don't get that this is no not they don't get it this yeah. is not props this is not special effects this is yeah. really real people you know are are being hurt and that's that's not okay yeah so, but are you and I say in virtually every single coffee chat we do, two things can be true. Yep. Way more than two things can be true. So it can be not as it seems, because it does seem pretty ridiculous that any builders would actually drop a whole load of rubble in front of horses. And I never saw that on film. So I never saw anyone. And I'm like, with all those crowds watching, how could that not be captured on film? So do I believe anything I see on the media? No. But do I believe real horses were injured in that attack? Yes. Now, am I attached to being right about that? No. But the whole point about this is we're seeing in society at large uh, such anger inside people and projection. And it's laughable that people get really annoyed when their friends call them conspiracy theorists and they quote that that's a title and you know that shows how ignorant you are if you say you're a co i'm a conspiracy theorist because they've all come true and at the same time they're trying to shame people that are having other discussions like we are that are opening up and saying well what if have you looked at this different possibility i mean if one more t person tells me that a certain channeler has said something different then well just because they say it doesn't mean it true Right, 90% Chandler's are in their imagination anyway. It's, it's hysterical. I mean, it's so ludicrous that you just think, wow, have we really been talking about these issues for four years and this is still where a lot of people are, where just because someone on YouTube said it makes it true. Now, there's a big difference and we talk about energy of words and words being spelled and we don't want to get too far down the politically correct route when no one can have a normal conversation and be scared about every word they're saying for saying the wrong phrase and not acceptable. We don't want to be doing that. But there's a big difference by set from saying, oh, interesting. Personally, that doesn't resonate with me. Yeah. What resonates with me is this, but just by saying so-and-so said this, so you must be wrong, or, oh, my God, you've gone backwards, or, oh, my God, this, it's like the judgment is in you. That says exactly. so much about the person. And if you're still, after all this time, and thinking you're so superior and knowing everything and criticising the normies, if you're still projecting that on other people, instead of saying, that doesn't resonate with me, I'll leave it. Yeah, that's what I do. When I watch videos that don't resonate with me, I don't even comment. I just turn them no. off. Like I don't, I don't feel the need. And I will say too, you know, I, I, I it's just been like, it's so unbelievably. And I know how some people said, "Oh, don't get attached to the bots. They're not bot, bots, guys." Like, oh no, I know. I personally know some of them. I yeah, mean, I've met this them. Is, yeah, because they're human beings. And this is my thing too. Like, I was thinking about this this morning. I was like, for four years, you, me. You, everybody watching, we've been sitting here going, kind of ridiculing 
our friends and family who still watch the media, our friends and family who got this, our friends and family who who don't see things like we we've been ridiculing them, like name calling them. I'm guilty of doing that. But then when we're given a potentially different possibility than what we think is the truth, we can't handle it. Yeah. When we're called, when we're told we might not be accurate, we can't. So we can dish it to others, but we can't take it. That's not being enlightened. That's not, not being, and that's something that taught me. I'm going to be very careful about how I speak about my friends and family who have this from now on. I'm going to be very careful about uh, the integrity in which I greet them and really remind myself that these are human beings as well. And they deserve respect, regardless of whether they agree with me or not on certain issues, just by virtue of being a human being. They're not hurting anyone and they don't deserve to be name called. And that's what, so for the bullies, the mean girls that were in the comment section last week, thank you. Cause you taught me a lesson on how I don't want to behave towards other human beings. And, yeah, and, and not just other human beings, sorry to interrupt, but also um, the wider, you know, wildlife, nature and everything. Because the thing is, of course, we're going to be to some extent judgmental. It's a play on words, you know, what you consider the definition of judgment is, what the, you consider the definition of an opinion. And you can't go through life without having a single opinion on anything. There's a big difference between a core value yeah. and an opinion. So I think that's really key. And one of my core values is always to treat others as I'd like to be treated. So if we can't have within our community that have done so much research on stuff, if we can't have civil conversations with each other, why should anyone want to spend time with us? Why should anyone want to listen to the advice? When you look at um, a lot of people that have really spread the word, let's put a, a couple of examples in there. We, we've had absolute ridicule of the medical profession. Yet a lot of the people that we've got our facts from about the jabba de doo about what it does in the body, about what we can do for it, are medical people. Yeah, so you can't have it both ways. Any time you tar people in the same brush, and it's absolutely fine to have a different opinion. That's I've learned more from people that have got different opinions from me over the last few years. I I didn't have a clue about a lot of this. You know, I yeah. was not into politics at all. I there was so much. I I knew I've known a lot about the medical agenda the education agenda for a long while. I've known a lot about. Um, I won't say the. FF, the events that aren't really organised by the people known ever since the big towers came down. Um, so, but there's huge amounts, and there's huge amounts I still don't know. And I think this is the beauty of when you can sit there and say, I don't know everything, I'm prepared to change my mind based on new information. Um, I'm prepared also to let people that are have done bad things in the past be allowed to change. All these sort of things. And I just, I hope that people who are watching it, I think, hope that each and every one of us can say, what can I learn from this? How do I respond? What does that say about what's really inside me? And most importantly, what am I going to do about it? Because if, if as a community we keep showing up like this, then why should anyone take our information seriously? Exactly. And I love that, Catherine, that you specify the difference between an opinion and a core value. Because that's really important. And you're right. Core values are like non-negotiables, you know. But yeah. opinions are, my opinions, I love it when my opinion changes on something. Because when I have an opinion shift on something, I know within myself that I've seen something from a new perspective. That I've learned something from an experience. When my opinion has shifted, I've learned something. So I've grown, I've grown wiser. But my core values don't change. Yeah. You know? and, and, and I think that's really important. I think... Um, you know, when we, when we, when I think if people go forward, like asking your friend, if you're, if you're, if your friends got this, but they're good people and they wouldn't hurt anybody themselves and they, then they're, then your, your core values are the same as them. Even if your political opinions might be different or your, you know, medical opinions might be different, your core values are the same. And, and with that being said, you know, my boyfriend and I, cause actually my boyfriend was horrified too when he saw some of those comments, like, and he's watched a lot of that shit, crazy stuff online. You know, and he's like, oh, my God, he was like, what people don't understand as well is you can't force your will onto somebody else to try to force your will onto somebody else is a service to self 
negative polarity. That's what the controllers have tried to do to us. So we and I, I think I want you to go into that in a bit more detail because I do understand that we've all done different research. Like I didn't know about the law of one until I started covering it with you and Mr. Fox. And but that's the whole point. We're all meant to learn things at different times and share that information together and not get one upmanship. So I, I, I would really like you just to explain to people listening, because a lot of people don't understand service to self and service to others. And I was there not very in that language very long ago, because, you know, it's like put your own um, oxygen mask on first at the pain we're talking about two slightly different things here so could you explain that Bryce so with the law of one and again I really and if you guys go down in my Amazon affiliate link the law of one all the stuff's in there the Cassiopeian I, I highly 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 recommend that you guys I, I I'm glad I've got a platform to bring this up because the law of one's really helped me in my studies but I would highly suggest everyone get the books for yourself they, they're pdfs as well online so you don't even have to purchase them you can always just download a pdf and the, the law of one is basically, in my opinion, to kind of paraphrase it, it's like this scientific template on spirituality. And the way that raw, the person, the, the consciousness, that's, that's it's, a, it's a collective consciousness that's channeling it, kind of speaks about it as like, this is just what it is. Like, it's just, you've got the service to self and you've got the service to others. And so basically service, so every density, so you've got first, second, third density are all kind of here, right? The lower, the lower dense, lower density, lower densities. And point before it splits between service to others and service to self. So that means their density is the place of friction because your, your point is to make choices different. How are you going to serve the creator basically is what they say, serve God. Are you going to serve God through, through your actions to uh, other selves and yourself that service to others or to the one soul self which is more of the luciferian path and again if this is i know this might be mind-blowing for some people again i really high, highly recommend and the law of one you got to read it multiple times to really take in what they're actually saying um and so when we look at actions taken with service to self the intention really our service to others lies lies within the individual Right. So we see like Ra gives a lot of examples where service to self actions have been taken or service, excuse me, service to other actions have been taken in the past by a service to self entity for service to self purposes, which is manipulation. Right. Um, like there's one incident that Ra talks about the uh, a, a negative polarity planet dropped a bunch of people from another planet here on Earth, um, like space alien stuff to say to save them right so it was a good act however they dropped them here the kentuckians the white people basically the the like people that look like me you know northern european people because they wanted them to enslave them on this planet so they pretended like they were helping them in order to then enslave them right so there's a manipulation behind it does that if that makes sense so when we look at things about like the intention like you know um our guru in india used to say he had great sayings one time telling two time telling three time god telling like, so when it comes to like forcing your will onto somebody, that's a service to self act. If you're trying to force, if, if you're trying to thought police someone, if you're trying to, if you're going to totally just criticize the person's complete humanity because they have a separate opinion, a different opinion from you and force your will upon that person, that's a very selfish act to take. That's a negatively polarized act to take. However, you can share your ideas with friends in a loving way and not force them to take you that's that one time telling two time telling three times and then you drop it and like god telling god telling you know like so yeah. so it you can't you also can't interrupt somebody's karma that's a big thing we say and that's something the law of one talks about as well we have to respect that every single person with a soul on this planet has their own karma and karma i think sometimes people get confused because it's been blown up in the western world karma is just cause and effect it's just your work like the, what, what you came here to, how you came here to re refine your soul, the things that you struggle with, the things that you, you know, you know, whatever that is for you, that's your karma. And as you lean into that and you work on that, you refine your soul. Well, so you can't interrupt somebody's karma. That's not fair to that individual person. People came here to learn certain lessons themselves. And if you try to derail that for your own selfish purposes, because you want someone to be just like you, 
then you've just taken from that person's autonomy. And so you have to, and it's, that's hard to do. And I imagine like, especially as a parent, that's probably really hard to do, you know, to like step. And I, I'm not, I'm not saying I know how to do it perfectly, but to be able to like step back and allow people to, you know, I'm not saying don't express concerns to somebody yeah. Yeah. going down a path, but at some point, one time telling, two time telling, three time God telling, you have to allow them to experience what it is that they came here to experience because only through that discomfort of that experience can they find the refinement right it's only through that friction can they actually find what they came here to do and so if you interrupt that if you take that from them then you've just you've really just taken their life force basically and so um and so that's really hard to do and it's so because you love people and you don't want to see your friends suffer you don't want to see your family get hurt especially if you You've been down that road. You know, it's not a good one. But at some point, you can't force your will onto somebody else. And um, and again, I don't, I'm not saying I have the answers on how to do that easily. I don't think it is easy. Uh, but I think it's selfless if you allow people, you know, that's why, you know, we can express to our friends and family, why send them information on these things over and over again. But at some point, you have to step back and let them make their own choices because you never know what they've what they decided to do, what their soul decided to do in this life, the obstacles their soul created in order to refine itself. It's like resistance training, like we were just doing, talking about conditioning. It is, it is it like is. resistance training. And one of the points which I thought someone made a really good point in the comment, it's like, and I really get the confusion on this, is like when we're talking about service to self and service to others, being service to others is nothing to do with martyrdom. It's nothing right. to with not looking after yourself first not filling up your own car up first not putting your own oxygen mask on first it's about whether the intent is for the collective or against the collective and i i think because obviously a lot of people aren't familiar with that terminology i can really see why it's so confusing and one thing I'm really hoping is and what we try and do in these conversations is put things in um, normal language. You know, it doesn't make you better just because you know the right words for things. And I think right. that can happen a lot in the spiritual community. Um, it happens a lot in the health and wellness community. You know, if you don't use the right terminology, you're almost laughed at. And it's it's like anything in life to me. It's the intent behind it. And you don't explain something to a 10-year-old the same thing way you explain to your 18-year-old. Exactly. You know, it's appropriate things. And it doesn't, it's not better or worse. You know, look back at, at how we all have evolved in our own life and how different we might be now you know i'm in my mid 50s now i make very different decisions to what i did when i was in my mid 20s and that's completely appropriate it would be a bit odd if i was sort of you know making these sort of decisions in my mid 20s you have to all go through the different stages in life for a reason otherwise they'd be pointless absolutely and i'm glad you brought that up because martyrdom is actually a service to self it's a negative yeah. trait um, and they, and that, yeah, it's not the service to self we're talking about in the law of one is not, has nothing service to others is you taking care of yourself first, yeah. like uh, service to self, uh, or excuse me, a service to others trait would be things like Catherine and I taking sponsorships for our channel because we're financially making sure we're okay to be able to con continue to be of service with our videos and our research, you know, our yoga, our yoga shala, my boyfriend's service to humanity is his teaching. That's part of his yeah. service, but he still has to charge tuition in order to maintain that. So, so yeah, please don't confuse. I would, again, I would highly suggest reading the law of one for yourself as the way that they, as the way that they kind of really, t and again, it takes a lot of time, like reading it multiple times to really digest what it is. You know, like, like I, I was going through some of the law, the other law of one the other day, and they, they talk about like, you know, Moses, we'll take Moses from the Bible, who started off as a positively oriented entity, but got turned negative, that can happen, you can start out positive, you're going in the direction of harvesting positive. And if a negative entity can come in a higher entity and derail you, that's, they've taken more energy into their into their own system, right? And and part of that is, you know, it's like they, the law, uh, Raw brings up the Ten Commandments. You read the Ten Commandments, you think, yeah, that sounds about right. No, that's a negatively oriented, the Bible is negatively, it's polarized negative. Why? Because it says, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not. Anytime you say thou shalt not, it's turned negative. Because what happens, and we see this in the Bible, when you say, when you make something so 
a, a finite with that. Like, so like you should not do that. People that do that, we see it in the Bible. They end up getting killed. They end up going through massive torture. But, you know, you look at the Yoga Sutras, for example, and the Patanjali is po positive, po oriented positive because Patanjali and his, his yamas and niyamas, kind of like the Ten Commandments, he doesn't say thou shalt not. He says, it might be best if we don't lie. It might be best if we practice nonviolence. It might be best if we practice cleansly, cleanliness. It's not thou shalt not lie. It's like maybe it's best if we want to live a more authentic life that we don't lie. You know, like it's it's worded differently. And so it's interesting when you read the law of one because you see how the littlest of things can shift um, the, ma the, ma the, the polarization of where you're going. And that's why, that's why to, to harvest positive, you only have to be 51% service to others because you have 49% there where you're allowed some forgiveness and some wiggle room, you know? And so it's just, it's very fascinating. It's so fascinating. And I will say one thing, one of the comments that I'm just going to call out because it really, really bothered me um, out of all of them, where one person commented that I should snap you out of it. And that real, and I don't even know to, to what they wanted me to snap you out of Catherine. I don't even know what they thought was so wrong that I needed to come and like shake you out of it. And that comment is insinuating the subtext that I need to force my will or, or whatever they perceive my will to be upon you. And I'm not going to do that. And I would highly suggest for everybody that might be a little confused about that. I know most of us read this in school, but might, might be a good time to go back and reread 1984 where they talk, talk about the Orwellian, the thought police, right? The thought police. I'm never going to be somebody's thought police, you guys. I don't, I don't want to be somebody's thought police. I don't, even as a yoga teacher, I've been in this yoga world for 18 years. My understanding of the mind-body-spirit complex, as Ra calls it, the mind-body-spirit complex, our experience as this entity, has changed so much since the beginning to now. And when I'm even teaching, sometimes I want to like jump ahead and tell the student, no, that's not right. But I have to remember, as Krishnamacharya used to say, you have to meet the student where they are, not where you are. And give them that space to not maybe have good opinions for a while, see how far those good no, get them so they learn from that so that they themselves can course correct, if that makes sense. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I, I just really laugh. I mean, I must say, I, I think... Um... You know, I have been doing a lot of work again this year on myself. I've taken it up to the next level. And I I was able to sort of observe a lot of it. But people are the other thing I wanted to talk about, Bryce, with you, because I think this is a really important distinction for people. There's a big difference between having boundaries and sort of trying to enforce your view on that. So people think that if we disagree with someone in the comment that that's engaging in that behavior and there's a lot of um different opinions which are allowed and people learn and do what's right for them at that stage you know everyone who's on social media will find this whether whatever platform you're on or even if you're sending messages in a text or something like that it's very interesting to see that you know, I've done with Jamie Soleil and also with Shanti, I've done a lot on the four agreements by um, Don Miguel Ruiz and Don Jose Ruiz. And it's a very similar, all these spiritual teachings are all the same message just being delivered in different forms and not taking anything personally. So people can disrespect, disagree with each other respectfully and not having any boundaries yourself and allowing other people to um you know really abuse you and not picking up as a parent it's like having a child or a puppy i'm not their owners but at a certain stage in their life i'm their teachers because yeah. if i've got a dog it's not that i believe in obey at all costs but if my dog doesn't have a good recall it could get run over or it yeah. could get attacked like a lot of the places where i work we've got wild cows and things like that there's dangerous situations that whether you've got a toddler or a dog or a horse or whatever, or even a friend that you need to make people aware of. And that's a big difference to enforcing your views on people. So getting into healthy, constructive discussions, I think, is a place where we can all learn from. 
But if you start telling that anyone they're wrong and you're right, then the problem isn't with the person that you were telling it to. The problem's with you. You're not asking to actually want to learn and understand. You're asking to enforce and coerce. Uh, 100%. And I, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I did a reading on, I actually read a few days ago, I filmed a video of me reading about We'll say Mr. Jones, the guy who was responsible for all the unaliving of World War II. You could start with an H because there's this huge like conspiracy, a literal conspiracy in the truth of world that he was actually a good guy, yeah. which never set right with me. It never. And I know we've been misled about a lot of things, but overall, like, again, two things can be true. We might not know the full truth about World War II and Mr. Jones could also be a bad guy. And so I just read what the cast, or excuse me, the law of one had to say about Mr. Jones. And they did clarify that Mr. Jones was on, he was, he was on the path to polarize negative service to self. However, he didn't, he wasn't actually harvestable when he passed away because you guys, and this wasn't in the reading. It's another reading. I went and looked it up because my boyfriend remembered why, because he disqualified himself for going negative. Because when his bird died, he mourned his bird. So there was love for another being that pulled him back down to the gray a little bit more than being totally diabolical. So he's being held in the astro planes to come back to a third density to finish the task. Thank God. Hopefully we won't be here when that happens. But um, but Himmler, one of his right hand men, it went harvested, harvested, completely harvested negative, which we if you look at what he did. And so I, I read and I even said in this video, Catherine, I even said, like, you know, do, you don't have to believe the raw material. You don't have to. Oh. But this is just perspective and we know anytime you take a life there are only a few occasions where taking a life is considered the positive path that's for your own if it's your self-defense or if it's putting something out of its misery mm. those are the only two times that it's considered service to others because you have to protect yourself you have a right to protect yourself and when you're also putting something out of its misery um but other than that it's never and actually the law of one they talk about how they still are in shock that we treat people who unalive the m-word with unaliving them like they still yeah. can't fathom that we do that on earth and i have really weird feelings about capital punishment too but you know and and i and the thing is catherine again i said so many times like if we just look at the situation of, with World War II and like a just a common sense, just a moral that that core value, right? Anytime you take somebody's life that's not under those two principles, it's not good. So even if he were going after the bad guys, let's say the fact that he enslaved them and tortured them, not okay. It's not okay. But I will show you. Speaking of, I've just got to pull this up because. This comment on this the video I did on Mr. Mr. Jones um, really upset me, like really pissed me off because this person and that's the thing, too, is a lot of times people lie, just lie, flat out lie about us. And it's not okay. Lying about somebody else is not okay. So and I'm kind of concerned about this person's name. I'm just going to I'm just yeah. going to say that. I think I'm probably going to block this person after this because this this name is very unsettling to me. But this mm -hmm. person said, Mr. Jones was not a good guy, but be careful that you are not doing exactly what you say others are doing in supporting Mr. Jar Mr. Jones in, regard in regards to communis communism. Tens of millions of innocents were unalive through Eastern Europe and China due to communism, yet you don't point that out. Neither fascism nor communism are good, but useful, uninformed, naive people continue to prove provide tactics support for communism by bashing fascism because it's so popular to do so i've listened on and off to you for for years but on this you need to do a lot more unbiased research into historical fact or recent history well i'm going to say not once have i ever supported communism i've i've been very vocal i've even i've even said catherine haven't i even said that i don't think nasara is real because it sounds like communism oh I've we, said that. yeah talked about and also when you look at the language in this and this is just, this is not for being right and the right, okay? This is just because if, are we really here wanting to learn and improve, which starts with ourselves, or are we? So most teachers have to course correct children. Most parents have to. Most people who have, you know, animals in their lives, again, often for safety. But any time when someone tells someone else, you need to do a lot more of this, 
there's a problem. You might want to, you might choose to, is very different to you need to. Just because someone tells you that they think you should do it doesn't mean it's a priority for you. And I think when we're using language like that, it's important to be honest with ourselves. I'm talking about the very weird guy that, uh, or girl or whoever that name Mary is. Yeah. Again, I mean, it says it all. Who would choose a YouTube name like that? But again, it's a learning thing for all of us. I pick myself up on what I write all the time. And trust me, there's no better learning than if you ever watch one of your own videos back. Yeah. Um, because it's like when I was starting off in business years and years and years ago, and they were teaching presentation skills. At that stage, they used to record people uh, doing presentations, and then you'd have to watch it back. And most people say a lot of things that they're completely unaware that they've said. Um, but are you going to learn from it? And the, one of the other things I want to say to this is that why has everyone, and I, I shouldn't say everyone, but so many people lost the ability to say, sorry, I was wrong. Exactly. Well, that's the thing too. And I'm still sitting here confused because I'm like, this whole video was literally me reading about Mr. Jones. Yeah. I wasn't even getting into fascism. I was talking about him and Himmler not their political beliefs. I was, and I actually responded. I'm just going to, cause I, I was, I was gobsmacked by this because I, so just, so was I supposed to, you're saying then to try to force your will upon me in reading about Mr. Jones through the law of one, you wanted me to also talk about Mao and Lenin and when we, and I am actually in the middle of doing a huge deep dive into the Bolshevik revolution. So you're completely wrong and lying about a person and trying to defame a person. Well, again, obviously this person wants to be on the negative path. So this might be a, a good example of someone who, you know, common sense, if you're going to call yourself Aryan Luciferian, then obviously you're looking to go negative. So lying about someone fits into that, that right away. But I said, when have I ever supported communism? In fact, I've spoken out against communism countless times. I'm confused by your comment as you have placed an ideology on me that is not mine. That's placing your will onto somebody else. But also maybe look at your language. You're saying maybe you're, maybe you, you might want to, whilst he's saying you need to. There's a big difference. And these differences are important because need is trying to force and coerce someone maybe you want to is a suggestion that the person can take on board or not and and these things may seem petty but they're not petty because look at what we know about what's being done to us on a global scale by our so-called leaders um yeah. there's a very another very interesting video on what's going on in israel with american troops on the ground by on the redacted channel this today i encourage people to do it because these play on words are really important to intent and we know that service to self people have to get a, a lot of the work that they do, which is nefarious, is about getting us to agree to it or not disagree, which is counter exactly. disagreement. And exactly. therefore, the choice of words can be very misleading. And if you listen to a lot of them, it says it all. Yeah. And I actually, you know, looking at this too, I mean, this could, this is defamation. This could hurt my be getting jobs in the future, the, uh, putting it, forcing this ide ideology on me. And so I am going to actually be, after we get off, I wanted to keep it unblocked so I could point this out. I will be blocking this person. This person will not be allowed to comment on my videos anymore because that is my boundary. Because what was said here was so far off base and so mm -hmm. far from the truth and was meant to hurt me. It was meant to hurt me. And I'm aware of that. Um, I did defend myself. I basically said, you know, mm. you know what else is bad? Lying. I said, in fact, if you watch me for years, you would know that I've compared fasc fascism to communism in that both are bad. You know what else is bad? Lying about other people, which is what you're doing here. And my videos are proof of your defamation and lies. Given by your name here, I do have to say I have some questions. Eek, like who would ever name themselves that? So, so this is, but then I just thought, you know, Catherine, you know what else? I, I get this imagery. Did you guys in the UK, was True Blood a big show in the UK like it was here in the United States? It was, but I never saw it. But I know a lot of people that have. So I don't know what it's about, but it was big, yeah. Well, there was this scene, it was really popular in like the mid 2000s. And it's based on a book series out of Louisiana. It starts off these vampires. They now have a synthetic blood advance so they can come out and join humanity, right? So that's the first season is like, all of a sudden, now what are we going to do with these walking dead 
vampires that we thought were fictional and now can only live at night, you know, so it's all about society adjusting. But as that, that Pandora's box open, all of a sudden other things start to become real, like shapeshifters, werewolves, fairies, like all of a sudden Pandora's box opens and it takes place in a small town in Louisiana. Well, there's this one scene in the second season where the main character, I'm hoping not, she finds out she's part fairy, right? And this woman comes in and she's saying all the right things and she's doing all the right things in the town and people are loving this woman. Meanwhile, what she's doing is spell casting. And there's this scene and the main character kind of can't fall for it because of her fairydom and her DNA. And I think it's the second season. I can't totally remember. But there's this one scene that steps, sets, sets, just set in my head. And all the people in this conservative little Louisiana town get so brainwashed and mind controlled, they end up in this big, and it starts with an O, can't say the word on YouTube, but it's adult interactions. And the main character is looking around at all of her friends who don't know that they're just like heathens going crazy because they've been so mind controlled and so brainwashed that they have no idea what they're doing anymore. And sometimes at this point, what's sad is I look at the... The, the truth or community like that. I, that's what I see in my head is I see people just being heathens and like projecting violence and, and they just, they've been so brainwashed by the telegrams and all these things. And I'm better than you, you know, and that is also a form of the negative path. If you think you're better than somebody else, if you think you're better than your friends who haven't woken up yet, then you are on a negative path. You know, I, I think that we're correct in our assessment of this, but that's my opinion. But I still love the people that my friends that got that, you know, they're still I'm still going to they're human beings, they're valuable people, you know, like that makes sense. And so that's just kind of I, I feel like we just got to rein it in. And if we're going to accuse our friends and family of being brainwashed, then we have to be able to look at ourselves, too, and say, where are we brainwashed? That makes sense. I'd really encourage you to go and both of us on our Rumble channels have got um, two interviews with Kathy um, and, and you know her surname. Oh. Oh. Now, the reason I think they're so powerful is one, I'd love people to watch how Kathy conducts herself. The gentleness, the understanding, the non judgment. And it's such a beautiful demonstration to me with Kathy about one, the resilience of the human spirit and how how strong we are mentally, emotionally, and physically, because on all those levels, it's amazing she's still here. And also how just because you've been through something horrific, you don't have to turn into a monster yourself. Exactly. Um, and it's just, it, it, when you interact with people like this, it really restores my faith in human nature because we can all make excuses for our behavior and we all do and that you know again we're allowed to slip up but we sh it's just about when you're adults do you recognize that do you recognize it yourself because once we get to be an adult we are pretty reliant on recognizing it ourselves and making decisions ourselves about whether we're going to change things or work on things or release our deep trauma you know Kathy spoke about when her husband died who was literally her savior in every sense of the word how she had to really go back into deep to doing the things that she'd learned to get herself out of the mind control in the first place because when you're at your most vulnerable that's when you're, you're you're most susceptible to mind control and with all of us everyone in their lives have got different stresses going on you know we've all got different things that are hitting us and that's the other thing you don't know when you're speaking to someone you don't know what they're going through you don't know there, there's a really i don't think there's ever an excuse to not be kind and respectful even when you're dealing with someone that you consider to be well there is an excuse sometimes in some situations it's, you wouldn't sit there and start to be nice to That's someone if your, life was, if your life was under threat and things like this but I'm talking about in every day I'm not talking about in those extreme situations at the moment so there are some beautiful walking examples out there so for all of us when we're having a really tough day and we're finding a stepping into reaction rather than the respond that I, I I mean I do it all the time still and I I've still got so much to learn but at least I'm recognizing it and at least I'm making a conscious effort. And I think we're not meant to be perfect. But no. if we can, as a community, self-respect and encourage good behavior, 
then if we really want to change the world, personally, I think we've got a much better choice of doing it from that point. 100%. And I will end it too with that as well. Like one thing my boyfriend said that I thought was brilliant and something I need to look at myself too is a, a truth can be scrutinized. Something that's the truth can, can stand up to scrutiny. A lie can't. And so when you hear a piece of information that triggers you, if if you're lashing out at that piece of information or the person sharing the information, is there a lie that you're trying to protect? Because if what you believe that is different from what the other person believes is the truth, then it can stand up to, you can question it. You can look at yeah. it. You can try, it can stand up to scrutiny. So when you have that trigger, maybe I'm, I'm going to try to do that with myself. Be like, is there a lie I'm trying to, trying to protect mm. here? Because if what I believe is the truth, then it can be questioned. It has yeah. no problem because the truth is the truth. It will always say the truth no matter what. But if it's a lie, a lie can't question. And that's, you know, unfortunately, I've learned too that there is an, a, there is an official narrative in the normie world and there is an official narrative in the truth or world. And if you deviate from the truth or world's official narrative, you will be met with vitriol like we were. Mm. And that's no different than what's going on in mainstream media too. And so unfortunately it just becomes very apparent that not many people have really done the work to truly wake themselves up and to be in a place, space of kindness and openness and understanding that thoughts and opinions have nothing to really to do with the core value or the integrity of the, the soul that's within the body, within the being. And, you know, like when I was in the sixth grade, listen, I, I thought I was going to marry the lead singer of Oasis. No, I'm glad I didn't. You know, like my opinions changed, right? Like when I was four, I wanted to be a mermaid. My my opinions changed, you know? So so thank God our opinions changed, you know, or, or else we might end up being married to the lead singer of Oasis, you know, like, you know, okay. so, so, you know. I'd still like to be a gymnast though. Yeah, and I'd still <laughs> like a tail, but that's for another day. <laughs> so some of them change, but some not. But yeah, self-reflection, there's never, I can't think, but feel free to tell me in the chat, I can't think of a downside of self-reflection, so long as you're not, yeah. you, you're you not spending your whole life in self-reflection. Yeah, I, I, I can't either. I think that's what, that's what we came here to self-study. We, we came here to human, our soul decided to come here and, and be in a mind-body-spirit complex in order to have that resistance that forces us to look at ourselves and to find different different courses and course correct and that's you know rarely in my life and I'll say this and I encourage people to to think about this too rarely in my life have I met a person who was super wise and kind who had not had something stressful happen to them at some point in their life Mm. And you've got two options when when friction happens. You've got two options. You can either become jaded and bitter, or you can go within yourself and heal yourself and learn from the experience. And it takes a huge person to be able to actually settle into that friction, observe the friction, and learn from it and make the world a better place because of it. You know, are, are you making the world a better? You know, was it Maya Angelou said? I know people have opinions about her, but you know, it doesn't matter what you say to people. What matters is the way you make them feel. You know, are yeah. you some people? I I never want people to feel intimidated around me. I never want people to feel like they're walking on eggshells around me. That would kill me if I knew somebody felt that way. Um, and I I back up to that because you and I have had some really. Uh, really full-on discussions about certain situations that we've really had different opinions on but we've never fallen out over it and oh. we've never felt that we couldn't talk to each other about it and right. then reflecting you know it's really good when you've got friends that you can actually be really honest with hold on to those friends I saw I know we've got to go but a lovely analogy of like different friends, and this was on social media somewhere, I'm afraid I can't remember who shared it, but you know, you've got friends that are like leaves on a trees where they're really, really pretty and great, but they blow off really easily. Then you've got branches, uh, that friends that are like branches on the trees and they're fantastic and they're a bit stronger, but they will break if you pull on them too hard. And then you've got friends that are like the roots of a tree. And those are the friends that no matter what you go through, 
and do what it does, they've still got your back. It doesn't mean they have to agree for you, but they're still there from you no matter what. So look after those friends that are your roots in your life. Well, it's because our core values are the same. I love that, that you said that. Like, I'm going to use that from now on because I love, I'll um, obviously give you credit for that because I, the your opinions and your core values are two different things. Mm. Our Catherine and my core values are exactly the same. So our opinions can differ because we know opinions change all the time anyway. Mm. You know, like, like it's, 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 but the core values are the same. You know, I would drop Ravi off at your house any day of the week and know he's going to be totally fine. He probably won't yeah. want to come back. <laughs> you know, you know so like, I'm the same, and that's a very good test. You know, anyone who's got children or animals, a good test for what you really think about someone is that is the perfect example. Would you drop them off and feel comfortable and not worry about it? And if you are, they're they're a friend you want to keep. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And my nephew and nieces, I drop off at your house. I hand you the diapers as I walk out the door. But I don't know if you want that, but they probably wouldn't want to come home either. But they do have the guinea pigs. Oh, it'd be worth yeah. you putting the links to the other videos, your video and our I original will. one, because it's really good learning for people to go back and listen a second time and say, oh, am I listening to it differently? What am I picking up from differently? But thanks so much for everyone who stuck through us for this. We know these videos are quite long. We used to do 20 minutes, but there's so much to talk about. Enjoy. Sure. I wanted to, yeah, too. And also the people that were totally he heard what we were saying and like in engaging in proper conversation, like, thank you. I know that we get sidetracked sometimes yeah. with the ones, but I, you know, even for my video, I had overwhelmingly such positive response. Some of your comments made me emotional how kind you guys were. And I want you to know that like, just because we point out the negative doesn't mean we don't also appreciate and love the positive even people who had different opinions than us oh i loved it and so but so many people were so beautiful about how they express themselves i learn a lot from looking at the comments which is why most of the time we leave our comment section on because yeah. i've learned a lot from how people have expressed themselves in the comment and i'm really really grateful for that me too good and me bad good and bad because you know sometimes in the bad ones i see myself in that as well so yeah yeah. So, all right, you guys. Thank well, you. next week we'll be back over on, on Catherine's channel. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, everybody.